Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So today Biddy and I have a few things to plant. I have been uh, unintentionally collecting plants, one here, one there, uh, on my little stoop. <laughs> I tend to just keep them here by the water, that way I can water them every morning. And now I have collected one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little plants and so I've decided it's time to uh, stop lollygagging and start planting so none of these are super well I wouldn't say none of them are super exciting because I am excited about this one so this is a bee bomb I've been looking for bee bomb for a while now and haven't had a lot of luck finding any and I just found these mom got three I got three at a local nursery it is a balmy lilac Biddy one's down now and it is a perennial, so hopefully it will come back. Mom said she planted some red bee balm last year in her backyard, and it did not come back. But typically, this one is hard, hardy, hardy down to 30 degrees, and we got down to 8 last year, which is very, very, very unusual for us. 30 is you is typical for our area. So hopefully it was just the um, unusual weather, and this will come back for me most of the time. So I got three of these that I'm going to go plant in front of my patch of cone flowers. I've been looking for kind of a shorter variety of something to go in front of those. I wanted either bee balm. Biddy is just rustling up something in the dirt. I wanted bee balm or dianthus, but I have, I've had bad luck with the dianthus in my yard. I don't know why it does great for mom. So I'm very excited. These get 10 to 12 high, so they should be a really pretty front border to the cone flowers. From there, I have a rosy returns daylily. So you might have caught the video where I planted three of these over in the oak tree garden. Um, I'm very excited. They are supposed to be a pretty pink looking daylily, kind of a mauve dusty rose kind of pink. And I am, I've been looking for pink daylilies. I have one, a Barbara Mitchell, which just bloomed for the first time in three years. So but that one was not super cheap. That's why I only have one of them. And I found these for $6 at my local Marvin's. And I was good, I only got three. And then the next time I went back for compost, they had had four total. If they'd had six, I would have grabbed six. This one was still there. And so I just decided, you know, I'm just gonna grab them and put them in the border somewhere down like i have the one barbara mitchell i'll mirror that on the other side with this guy this half of the yard the left half i'm doing more of a border look of kind of one plant here and one plant there and then more groupings at the front of the border as opposed to on this side is more uh splashes and swaths of things then i have a lavender this is a spanish lavender I actually got one of these for the porch uh, a couple weeks ago and I planted it. And if you caught my three mistakes you're making or three fixes to make with your drip irrigation video, you know that I killed it. They like very little water. They're very drought tolerant. And I thought there was drip holes in that pot. There were not. And so I drowned it. So I got a replacement lavender. Hopefully this one will live now that the pot has drip holes. And if not, we will put something more water happy in it. Then I have a few, this one may not make it, a few pink salvia. These are a receding annual my mom got from a guy on Facebook Marketplace five or six years ago and they recede like crazy all over her yard. I just got some from her mm, two years ago and mine have reseeded well, but they recede in the dirt on the other side of my path. And so I've moved them over. And this year I only had five or six receipts. So she had one come up in this pot and she had two come up in this pot with this little guy that's finally coming back. We thought he might be dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig these out and hopefully this guy will be happier by himself. And then I have one more uh, Super Tunia Vista bubblegum that I don't really need. <laughs> but uh, the way they get you at this nursery with these black cans 
is that if you get a whole flat, they're much better priced than if you get one or two plants individually. So we needed one or two plants more to make our full flat. And I have one super tunia that instead of filling out all together, it's, it's going left and right. And it's right by my front porch. It's literally like a foot behind y'all right now. And so I was like, I don't really need this, but it's right by my front door. I want this to be the biggest, prettiest petunia. So I'm going to go ahead and get another one and pop him in next to it. And hopefully then he will be happy with a friend. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to plant all these, and then I'll show you where they end up um, at the end. Let's go. All right, y'all, last but not least, we've got our lavender. We're going to replace this sad one that I killed. Uh, my mom was like, you should return that plant because it should have lasted more than like four days. And I'm like, I would, except I killed it. If it had had drainage holes, no excuse, but um, I drowned it, so my fault i will buy a new one so this is the back let's turn it around take this guy out i have given him a little bit of love and a little bit of time to see if he would come back and he's just dead so sad but you know it happens really shouldn't have even rooted in like I should be able to just kind of pull him out but he had a big root ball there we go all right let me get a pot to put him in so I don't want to just throw him on the porch Put him in the compost pile. He will not go to waste. Now, get the bottom of the roots. 
that the new one will fit in because they should be the same size. It is so humid out here. And it is only May. Fairly sure I put fertilizer in this the first time, but I don't remember, so we're just, just gonna do it again. Alright. This is the front. This guy's got a tall roof ball. go a nice alive plant that's what we wanted this is right outside my front door so I've been walking out and seeing this dead plant every day for like a week and a half since I've been trying to see if he would come back to life and that's not a huge amount of time but it's just nice to have him alive again let's use some burn lot clean off my Okay, that's gonna take 12 years. All right, now that he's alive, let's go ahead and put the emitter back in. When I first did this plant, I gave him three emitters. And I think three emitters was too much. It says that lavender doesn't like a lot of water, which makes sense. It's kind of a deserty flower, right? So we're gonna try one emitter, drainage holes. I'm gonna watch him very carefully. So let me go ahead, get, use my hose to clean my hands off. It was much more efficient. And uh, <laughs> my chives, my lavender, my candle. All right. Let me get dried off and then I will show you where everything ended up. This is a great spot to sit and relax when it's not um, a tsunami during fern watering hour. Okay, so we have our lavender. It looks very pretty and hopefully he will be very happy here. And then let's make our way down the porch. You can see we've cleaned up our pile. I only have uh, these three plants left for a different project. And this is where we start the new plant tour. So this is my one super tunia that for some reason, instead of growing giant, He's just growing left and right. I want him to fill in this whole area. And so while I didn't necessarily need a new one, again, needed to fill out the flat. And I figure this is right off my front porch. Let's just do it. So popped one in here. And, you know, if they want to fill in this whole area, they can. From here, we go down the way. Here is my Barbara Mitchell Daylily, and it is a soft pink. So I wanted to tuck them back a little bit on the other side, but Barbara Mitchell gets tall, whereas the Rosie Return 
is a 14 incher. You can see how short these blooms are in comparison. So I went ahead and tucked them here. We've got a kind of asymmetrical thing going on with lantana on the inside, gumfrina on the outside. And so if I'd paid attention, I would have put the lantana here and I could have put the daylily here. But you know what? Again, everything back here, I'm trying to do more of a border. It's working down here really well. I'm trying to add more to this side. Right here is where the shade really, really, really starts. This is all shade. This is part shade. So it's a little harder on this side because those same sun-loving plants that do well in a border don't thrive down here. So put our little daylily here and he has a bloom literally about to open. So hopefully we will get to see color on this guy like tomorrow. <laughs> and then got to go all the way across the way. This poppy is just about done for the season. We are not going to pull him out until he's absolutely finished. And then my mom wants him. He was supposed to be pink. All right, so we put one, two, three of the pink salvia. They transplant kind of okay. Sometimes they need a little extra water. This one kept wilting, so I gave him an extra emitter. I still don't know that this one will live. He had receded in one of those little four packs that my mom had that was dead plants. They weren't getting water. And then these two were in that plant uh, just out on my mom's front porch. So, you know, they're free. They, they self-seeded. So we'll see. But I like this whole portion here to be that tall pink salvia. And then last but not least, I tucked our three bee bombs here in front of the cone flowers. So this is all cone flowers. This is Gara. We've got a climbing rose here. And we went one, two, three bee bombs. They get about 12 inches high with those purple blooms, which should be pretty. And the bees like it. I'm. This is my pollinator garden here. And my milkweed's going on the other side of this air conditioner, which eventually I'll cover. And then salvia growing in well so you know my goal is always to a put in things i like but b put in things the pollinators like and i know bee bomb is one that they really like so i'm excited to add him to my garden and i want to see what he looks like when he blooms so hopefully he'll do really well and i'll be able to show you in a future garden tour but i am hot it was so humid today like i don't even know why it's 5.30. It's not hot out. It's just humid. So I'm going to go inside and get cleaned up. If I can take a little bit of a break, I may come back out and do some work in the raised beds today. And you may see that video. If not, I'll see it eventually. I'm going to go ahead and go. So I will see y'all in the next video. If you want to go back and see those three rosy returns daylilies that I planted behind y'all in the oak tree bed, click here. Bye, y'all.